welcome back everybody to another episode of the nonprofit show. What a great way to start off a Monday with our friend Jackie Davidoff, Principal Executive Leadership Coach with Davidoff Strategy. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Well, I'm really delighted to have you here because we're going to be talking about authentic leadership and leadership in general, I know, is your sweet spot. It's such a huge topic in the nonprofit sector. And so I think you're going to really challenge us today. And I think that's always a good thing. So let's get started. Are you ready? I am ready. Awesome. Hey, first, we want to make sure that we thank all of our amazing supporters. Our presenting sponsors include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Fundraisers Friday, and 180 Management Group. These are the folks that allow us to have these amazing conversations like we're going to have with Jackie today. Another thing that's really cool is in the last month or two, we've been rolling out our new co-host panelists. I'm flying solo today because I want a Jackie all to myself. <laughs> Hopefully you've had a chance to meet some of them. They are tremendous thought leaders. They come from all over the country and they all represent different sectors within the nonprofit world and they are just riveting. So um, I hope you've enjoyed getting to know them as I have. But really, I've gotten to know and really appreciate Jackie Davidoff, Principal and Executive Leadership Coach, as I said, with Davidoff Strategy. We met in Boston a month or so ago at the JMT Consulting Conference, and I had the distinct pleasure of watching you present, and I thought you were riveting. So I was like, this is the gal that I got to get on the nonprofit show. And so I'm thrilled you're here. Thank you, Julia. Tell me what you all do. You're based in Chicago, right? Yeah, we're based in Chicago and our work is national. And we work primarily in the nonprofit foundation social sector. Um, and our clients are organizations that say, you know what, we have more in us. And our mission calls us to that. And we do work in three areas. Uh, strategy, which could be organizational development, which we define as looking at what is the next level of this organization's growth and development toward its mission. So mm -hmm. a lot of times organizations are, you know, really stuck in the system that they know themselves as, as people are. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, and we look at, no, we're going to intentionally help you see and disrupt your system so that you can be more effective in your work. And, you know, whether it's at an individual level, a leader level, or an organizational level, we believe that all organizations have more capacity. And we work in the nonprofit sector because there are so many missions that matter deeply to a lot of people and communities, and it's work that means a lot to us. Um, and we understand that all people and organizations have way more capacity than they have any clue. And we're going to talk more about how do you even understand what that means. So we work in strategy, culture, what we call higher functioning, lower drama cultures, because we all have work to do around that anytime we get people together. And individual leadership development and coaching, which is really at the core of if you if you seek to develop yourself and be of greater contribution, it helps to have other people giving you feedback and helping guide you with a roadmap of how do you do that? Right. You know, it's so interesting because so few folks actually say um, you have more in you. Yeah. A lot of times what I hear in the nonprofit sector is, we're overloaded. We have too much. How do we offload? How do we, you know, get rid of stuff? And so it's really interesting, almost like uh, you're coming at this with a sense of abundance and just, you know, a shift. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about perspective shifts. John Davidoff, the founder of Davidoff Strategy, did a whole his his, his dissertation on that. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, we define that as we all come to our organizations, even our families and communities with kind of a locked in set of un an understanding about who we are, who we think we are, that gets formed very early on. And unless we're 
aware of that, those, those beliefs about what we can expect from the world and what we think people expect of us, even in our organizations or with a partner, we're going to keep playing out that sort of, it's almost like a pre-programmed, pre-programmed, you know, robot way of looking at things. So for us, when we say, you know, a perspective shift, that means consciously seeking to know what that that pre-programmed way of operating those really were just like a set of habits. And it's almost as if we go to the grocery store and we buy the same thing over and over. So we show up in our organization in a way that we think that this is how we should show up. So many of us are externally oriented. So we really look at how one can develop an internal locus of control, what we say, mm -hmm. that you can increasingly orient to what do I think needs to happen here? What does my organization need in me? What are things that aren't working well that I'm going to say, let's take this on. Let's not just, you know, be dissatisfied. So it's working on skill building of my job. We believe it's each person's job to be satisfied in their organization and wow. to be mission drivers. So that means continuous self-improvement because that's how we're going to get there and starting to question the ways that we th we have these voices that say oh no you shouldn't speak up because you right. might upset someone and say no, right. no i'm taking on the adventure of developing myself as a mission driver and that means i will speak up you know i love that and i think that it leads me to the the first question that we need to talk about and, and that is what is authentic leadership? And I think you're gonna challenge all of us to redefine this and even understand what it is. So, so help me understand this, Jackie. Sure. <laughs> so I, I let you know that I have a little bit of skepticism about the term authentic leadership. Yeah. And I say that because it sets up this paradigm of it's, it's something out there, it's, almost as if someone else is defining and you're either there or you're not. And we believe that leadership development is a moment to moment choice, making choices in the moment. As I said before, watching yourself start to want to say something in a meeting and shut it down because what if you don't say it right? Or what if you don't look smart or what if it comes out awkward? And so for us, authentic leadership is really leadership development to continually watch myself starting to default to my old self and saying no i'm going to i'm going to approach my job as a continual adventure in developing myself so that i can be of greater contribution to my organization to my colleagues to if i serve on a board to this board so it's that moment to moment diverting myself from old you know, choices that don't really serve me and keep me small and are not a contribution to my organization. That's how we become more of a con of, of a contribution to our organization is making the choices that say I'm going off script and I'm going to step into my capacity. Mm -hmm. So when I hear you describe it like this, it's it's never anything. It seems to me like and you use that word journey, which I love that word this is not like a one and done you go somewhere and you're good to go this is an eternal um process right because yeah. I, I the thing i like about this is that the world changes our sectors change our mission changes right because of things going on around us and so if we aren't always evolving we're not really serving ourselves in our mission. Is that kind of where you're going with this? Yeah, and also so many of us, um, especially a lot of the clients that we work with in the nonprofit sector and we associate with are, you know, these are times that are, are uncertain and we're amidst a lot of change and it's gonna stir up a lot of change in our organizations, a lot of uncertainty. And if we're, you know, it's very, we're going to be challenged in different ways. We're going to be challenged to respond to these situations that come up. And, you know, a lot of our work in particular is in the public health sector. So you can imagine that there's a lot of challenges that are happening, have been and, and continue to be. And so, you know, we really believe that 
the challenges that you see in your organization that you're up against, that it would be really easy to say, you know, I, I, I don't like this. I'm pissed about it. I'm angry. Right. It'd be very easy to go to some level of, 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 you know, upset victimhood collapse. And so we really feel that and trust that whatever the challenges you face in your organization are calling out more in you. So it could be calling out the sk skill development, calling out, okay, well then, or if, if a colleague is upsetting me and I'm getting really charged, perhaps I, I have skills to develop around how do I deal with conflict? How do I responsibly address things in my organization that I am dissatisfied about? And emotional intelligence is a huge piece of that. So we teach and train and coach people to attune to one's emotions. And we say, you know, there are five key emotions, hurt, anger, fear, joy, and sadness. And contrary to what a lot of people believe that, well, that, yeah, there's one good emotion. All of those emotions we believe are designed to lead you toward positive outcomes. Mm -hmm. A lot of our work with people is to attune to when you feel fear. Oh, perhaps you need to prepare for a meeting or when you're angry, perhaps something's going on in your organization and you need to set a boundary or to say, this doesn't fit with how I think we need to be working. So to trust, to attune to those emotions and develop, learn to, uh, to what am I feeling right now and trust that that's leading you somewhere that is a toward a positive outcome that's gonna be a contribution to your organization. We need to- so I I want to dig into that a little bit more, Jackie, because it seems to me like one of the big things that's going on right now is that we have this huge demographic shift of, of CEO, C-suite, um, executive directors in our nonprofit sector retiring out. We also are seeing yeah. this with our boards. And so then we have this like new group that maybe has not been trained up or given the reins to kind of start marching forward. And then all of a sudden, it's like, holy moly, we got to get them up. They're next up. What do you, what do you see that? Like, how do you see that playing out? Um, because that's the now. Yeah. That's what's going on now. And I'll tell you, when I'm out and about and speaking, that's like one of the biggest things that folks come up to me and, and ask me about or um, commiserate or they're frightened. Use that word fear. Mm. They're actually frightened for their organizations because of this sweeping movement of leadership. Well, we, yeah, we do see that a lot. And a lot of the organizations that we work with are coming to us because they recognize that they've promoted people up and they don't have training on how to manage and lead others. And so, you know, I think that it's important for organizations to recognize that, you know, going back to where we started, there's a lot of potential in these younger team members. They don't have the same level of experience, but that that's, there are so many trainable skills and investing in your people is really one of the most important things that I think an organization can do so it can be effective in its work and recognizing that, you know, we, we see a lot of value in bringing people together who are in some sort of a, you know, development situation and working with them as a cohort so that they oh. don't feel alone. And, you know, I love working with teams could be cross departmental. It could be, you know, one department, but really creating an environment of learning and growing and an understanding that of course we are here to develop ourselves. Again, mission is the thing that I think calls out in people that they're willing to be in some level of discomfort, to not know, to be trying trial and error. And, and, but it, but you know, the more that you can just get that, that is the, that's okay. That's normal. And that's how we're going to learn versus feeling like when people come into these roles and responsibilities and they feel a lot of fear that they have to get it right, that's not going to lead to great outcomes. So I think it's really important to create an environment of we are learning and growing together. We're going to learn through each other. There's a lot. That's why we, I love, you know, I lead a couple of groups for, for women in the nonprofit sector because that sense of community of like, I'm going to learn through listening to you to be inspired by the risks that you're taking, that you're getting supported, that, that and that eases our 
sense of threat that, you know, we're in our sort of fight flight mode a lot because we, you know, and I think the other thing is that people in the nonprofit sector care deeply. Mm -hmm. And the more that, you know, I affirm a lot of my clients and say, this matters to you. And I see how much you care. And when people feel that, I mean, sometimes I, I say that to myself, it just yeah. helps relax because that's true. And that's why I do what I do. And when you're in the midst of a lot of like, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I, I, this is important. I want to get it right. It really helps to even, like I say this to myself, oh, wait, you're scared because this matters and you care and yeah. you're nervous. I love that approach. And, and that leads me to my next question. And that is, how do we know if we're leading with this authentic behavior or if we're not like, how does, how do we self reflect and at the same time evaluate ourselves within the group? Because um, if you've been, you know, working the same way and rowing in the same direction for decades, yeah. How do you shift? And then also as another part of that, how do you understand if you need to shift because you have a younger demographic or you have a, you know, you have a younger group coming up? Like how does, how do, can you self, I almost want to use the word assess. No, that's a great word. So, you know, so for me, we, we at Davidoff define leadership development as increasingly developing the ability to watch yourself as you create yourself in in the moment as you show up in your organization increasingly watching yourself i i really am working on i'm developing almost like a third person perspective so that i can watch myself as i'm you know showing up making decisions speaking up in a meeting and then i assess to myself how did i do did i have the outcome that I wanted were people following me when I spoke. And the more that I can get closer and closer to watching myself and either, you know, I'll start to go back into my old, you know, small pleasing kind of a mode, which is my default. And then I'll shift. I'll say, oh, no, 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 no. To, to be effective here, you need to be willing to speak something that might be uncomfortable to people. Mm -hmm. And so it's that being able to watch myself Oh, starting. No, no, I'm going this way. Always thinking about what is needed here. What should I, what is going to help me get to the outcome that this organization, why are they hiring me for? So, you know, that seems like a habit and a self-awareness that a lot of us probably have never, never even explored or thought about. How do you start to get that behavior, that sensibility going? journaling or I mean like what what is it that could help us to figure that out there's at least a couple things one is that um really cultivating uh, uh your team to give each other feedback mm. feedback is a really important tool and too many organizations have cultures where people are very careful around each other and very mm -hmm. you know with good intent wanting to be nice to each other but that doesn't create an environment of learning and growing. So for instance, in our organization, we give each other a lot of feedback. We, we hold high expectations for each other. And we, we are, you know, we are, we have increasingly developed that our culture is one where we are honest and direct with each other because we know that's going to support the growth of our colleagues on our team and our clients. So that's what, you know, when people, sign on with us, they know they will get a direct, honest response because that is our responsibility to serve. So I think people can work in their own organizations to create cultures where we agree we're going to, one of our principles is going to be, we're going to be honest and clear with each other. And we're going to hold, you know, what we call clear and current relationships with each other. So we're not going to let things you know, kind of get swept under the rug because right. we don't know how to say it. That's, that's, you know, that's a barrier to effective functioning. Yeah. So, so I started out with feedback. Another one is, is attuning to your emotions as we talked about before, because they will give you a lot of information. They will, they are invaluable. If, if we're just, you know, and so many of us in the nonprofit sector, we're like doing machines. We're just, you know, with good intent going 
from thing to thing. And I can't tell you how many, I mean, and I'm, I can do that too. <laughs> but if we don't, we, you know, we say that's the doing, but you know, something that we've, we, we look at is the being, being based leadership. So really the more that you are closer and what am I feeling now in this moment, you can create assignments for yourself. And I, I do this with clients, like take a little, you know, post-it note and write fear, hurt, anger, sadness, joy. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, I, like put little tick marks. So you're training yourself to be aware. Wow. I'm feeling hurt. Oh, wow. And that's an emotion. That's a lot, you know, really hard for people from our families. It's hard to feel it, but you can train. Oh, I'm feeling hurt. Oh, wow. What's going on? Oh, I, I just, you know, spoke up in a meeting and no one responded to me and then they just went on. And so, if I can, oh, that was hurt, then I can look at, oh, well, what's my responsibility there? Did I speak up in a direct way? Did I, how did I do there? And what would I do different next time to be more effective? That's really what's important. The only important question, no beat up, no blaming, which is what could I do different? So, right. that you know, Jackie, it's so interesting. Um, it seems to me that a lot of times we are so busy chasing our tail and we're going from fire to fire in the nonprofit sector. And certainly there are segments of our sector that are far more oriented towards this, um, that this is a heavy lift to step back and reorient and ask these questions. Um, I can see why, why this is probably better situated for a team versus an individual do you think that's no. true or no no oh, no. no no it's really both uh -huh. because the that's when i went you know from the beginning when i said we each have more capacity we, yeah. we each have more potential to continually tune into ourselves to i call it you know listening to my inner tuning fork mm -hmm. and so many of us especially women women of color just, We've been trained not to tune into ourselves. We're very, I know for me, I, I, I'm, I grew up as a middle child. I was always very externally relate, just oriented, like looking for what do people need from me? And I'm going to do a great job of that. But I, I needed to develop and I, I still am. What, what do I think? What do I think needs to happen? What do I want? What is satisfying for me? And that's the work, that's inner work. That's the work for each individual to do. So it's really starts with the individual. And I think that's why coaching can be very helpful to get right. that kind of support. You but know, it's an interesting thing because we, we talk about coaching. We've been talking about it more and more in the nonprofit show. And I, my husband brought this up to me probably a year or two ago. And he's like, you know, when it, when you look at the spectrum of professional athletes and even amateur athletes and collegiate, you know, they have a nutrition coach, a strength coach, yeah. a mental coach, a, you know, a technique. I mean, they, they bring people in for periods of time. They bring people in for the whole time. I mean, coaching is such a critical part of, of that sector or that, that, that sector, I guess. And for some reason, in our sector, in the nonprofit sector, it's a foreign concept, and it almost seems um, like a punishment or or remedial, as opposed to how are you going to get ahead to the next level, right? I mean, we, it seems like we have to retune how we think about this. Well, I mean, I think there is a reality that resources are can be more limited. Um, and I and I think that there may be in the corporate sector more of a recognition of the value and importance of, of people development. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that that's a really important part of being a leader is focusing on how, how are my people developing mm -hmm. and my role in that and my role in supporting their development. So, mm -hmm. I mean, ideally, that would be a, a perspective shift for the nonprofit sector. I think many organizations are there. And they recognize that, you know, it's it's very important to invest in our people. They care deeply. They work really hard. And we all can benefit from this. Like we all, you know, and as mission drivers, this is a really important tool. Yeah. 
Are you seeing um, since the pandemic um, that people that that nonprofits are are more interested in exploring this and exploring personal development, opening up budgets, or are they still, you know, shying away from this? What's what's your general sense? I think since the pandemic, there's been more of a recognition that, especially since a lot of people are hybrid or, you know, working remotely, like it's super easy to be isolated. And so I think organizations are recognizing that that putting resources to you know, bring teams together and even like facilitating conversations around uh, like we were brought in to lead a, a remote team to talk about the culture and to talk about, oh, let's all share what, how are we doing? What's our experience right now in this? What is the current culture of our organization? And then, oh, well, and what's the ideal culture? And let's actually develop our leadership in creating the ideal culture and anything to me that's around helping give people a space where they can share what their experiences are and what they desire. That's going to, that is going to pay off ninefold for an organization because, you know, we we're all hungry. We're all hungry to contribute. We're all hungry to be seen and known and to be heard and to, to, you know, to belong. So those are all qualities that, you know, the more an organization recognizes that that's an investment worth making when people start to get those needs met through this sense of creating connection. It can be on a Zoom for people mm -hmm. who are distributed teams, but right. that stuff matters so much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really an interesting thing. I love that you talked about that work from anywhere, work from home, the remote environment, um, because at the end of the day, it's still a team. Right. Right. And so understanding that and kind of reorienting what the possibilities could be and what what the problems could be too, recognizing where there's some duress or there's some misalignment. Very, yeah. very interesting. And, and I want to add, like learning and developing yourself as an understanding that that's part of your organizational culture, like that's nourishing. We're working mm -hmm. on what how do we train people to to actively seek and value nourishment because, you know, in the nonprofit sector, so, so many of us are tuned to give to others and care for others. And that's beautiful. That's a beautiful part. But I think we have skills to learn that, well, how do we do that for ourselves? And that right. value the importance of that. Again, that goes back to emotional intelligence, learning that th that is actually important to do. Oh, right. wow. I need to get up and get some water. I need to call a friend because I'm feeling a lot of vulnerability right now, or I'm about to do something that's, you know, talking to my board or whatever, and it's scary. And I'm going to reach out to a colleague and just talk about that and then create a vision for how I want to show up in that board meeting. Like those wow. are skills of nourishment. And, you know, we believe that it's our responsibility to be nourished. It's not one out there. It's our responsibility. And it involves, again, breaking those beliefs about what's okay. Is that okay to do? And then by saying, yes, it, it's actually important to my, my contribution, my, my ability to drive mission. Right. I love this. Jackie, this has been an amazing opportunity. Like I said, I, I was so fortunate to hear you speak and learned so much from you. I was just captivated by your message and, uh, and, and because I think of where I am in the journey of my leadership, I looked across the decades of where I had been and what the ecosystem was like. And so uh, you gave me so much to think about. And I, I think you've given us all so much to think about today. Jackie Davidoff, Principal Executive Leadership Coach of Davidoff Strategy. Check out their website, davidoffstrategy.com. You can learn more about their team, what they do, how they work within um, this concept, which is so broad and yet very specific at the same time. Um, really an interesting take on how we can be achieving mission, not just correcting problems or unhappiness. That's what I thought was fascinating. <laughs> uh, Jackie, was it, you know, to me when I met you and then uh, Dr. John Davidoff, I was so fascinated by how you wove this into the bigger picture of mission. And uh, so it's it's really 
a, an intelligent way to be looking at leadership and, and how we can orient ourselves towards achieving our missions, um, which at the end of the day is what we're trying to do, right? Absolutely. That's kind of it. Well, you have been a delight once again. Um, check out DavidoffStrategy.com and you can learn more about their work and their amazing team. Um, we have an amazing team internally and they include our presenting sponsors. And that means Blue Meringue, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Fundraisers Friday, and 180 Management Group are part of our team. They come every, each and every day so that we can provide you um, episodes of the Nonprofit Show, uh, which is an amazing thing. Now in year five, we've done more than 1,100 episodes. Um, and so keep sticking with us and uh, joining us as we have these amazing conversations. Jackie, this has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was really fun. It was a lot of fun. Hey, every episode we end with this mantra and it goes like this. To stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here next time.